I was going to have to come see you. Well, I'll see you all later. All right. Welcome, everybody, to our Rotary meeting on this lovely September day, the day that is actually Agatha Christie's birthday. In case you didn't know, she would be 132 years old today. That's meaningful to some of us in the group. Today, we are very excited because we have our Life Leadership and Interact uh, update presented by the students themselves. Um, so they'll do a great job. And then we have, we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. We have a little literacy message and then a reflection from Bill Erickson. So let us start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As Bill comes up, I will give you a little literacy. For those of you who are reading to your little tots, your grandchildren, you know that a lot of books are using this uh, internal rhyme, and that's important for them because they learn to anticipate what the next word is, and they learn to do predicting for the story. So I want to show you, give you an example of a perfect internal rhyme for your kids. My favorite poem, Disobedience. James, James, Morrison, Morrison, whether be George Dupree, took great care of his mother, though he was only three. James, James said to his mother, mother, he said, said he, you must never go down to the end of the town unless you go down with me. If you want to find the dramatic story ending to that, you have to look at When We Were Very Young by A. A. Milne. It's a real cliffhanger. <laughs> Bill. Good afternoon. I've been told to keep this brief so that the food doesn't get cold. So this message will be coming to you at 300 words per minute with gusts up to 650. It is good to recognize how different we are. Our talents, our dreams, our backgrounds, and our occupations. And it's good to know that when each of us were created, the mold was broken. Not one of us is exactly the same as anyone else. Our fingerprints, our voice patterns, give evidence of how wonderfully unique we are. Yet, we give thanks for knowing that as different as we are, we can take these differences and mobilize them for the good of Rotary and for Muskegon. In our differences, we can think the same thoughts and move together toward a common goal. I ask for blessings as we meet together. I give thanks for our individuality and also for our common bond of Rotary. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Please take a seat, enjoy your dinner, and we will reconvene in about 10 minutes. Welcome back. We're going to reconvene our meeting by introducing our visiting Rotarians and guests. And so would Kelly DeVos, John Nolan, come up with your guest so we can start the introduction. Does John have a, John has a guest too? John Mathis? John? Mathis, you want to introduce your guest? Sure. Okay. We're going to go right in between these lines right here so we can see you on the. Oh, is John right. introducing you? Okay. All right, John, right in front of you so we can We're see you. We're going to just. There you go. All right. 
Uh, to my left, Katie Drake. Uh, Katie grew up in Rotaract at Baker College, now is a Rotarian, and serves as the treasurer of the Life Leadership Conference. Katie Drake. To my right, our, assist, our district governor-elect, Jeff Coyle, prominent Rotarian from Fremont, Michigan, loves to get around to clubs and loves working with youth and wanted to be a part of seeing this youth panel today. Please welcome Jeff Coyle. Glad you're here. Without this lady, the Life Leadership Conference would not have happened this summer. Uh, Rhonda Lamberg, uh, past president, district interact chair, and life leadership co-director with me this year from Houghton Lake, Michigan. And her husband, Bob Pacella, uh, both dentists in the prominent dentists in the Houghton Lake area and graduates of the U of M Dental School, where they met. I'm Kelly DeVos, and this is my coworker, um, Mary McDonald. She's the branch officer of our Fruitport branch at Shelby State Bank. She's also big in um, the Muskegon Rescue Mission. Thank you, Kelly. Welcome. Hi, this is my wife, Raina, the co-founder of City Boy Corporation. This is my friend from Florida, Jan Amway, and she's up here for the fall for ball games at Grand Valley. Good afternoon, Rotary. Uh, am I on here? Okay. There. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming our guests from the Career Tech Center. <laughs> to, to I can only do this for so long. Uh, to introduce two of their seniors is Sassman Parker. She is the placement specialist at CTC. Yes. Thank you. I am Sassman Parker with the Career Tech Center, and for those of you who are not familiar with the Career Tech Center, we are a technical high school in Muskegon County. We're located near a Muskegon Community College, and we have over 800 students right now enrolled at our school. And um, without further ado, I would like to introduce my lovely students here. I have Kara Hammond and I have Asher Burton with me, so I'm gonna let them introduce themselves further. Thank you for having us. Hi, I'm Kara. Um, I attend Orchard View in the mornings, and then I attend the criminal justice class at the CTC in the afternoon. Um, I want to um, say that the CTC is one of the safest places I have ever had in my life, and they give great opportunities to every student there. And they really do help you with your future and the things that you do want to do. Um, I plan after um, I graduate this year, I plan to attend George Mason to go in the criminal justice and medical to become a coroner. Hello, I'm Asher. I go to the Career Tech Center in the afternoon and Oak Ridge High School in the morning. I attend the hospitality and food management class in <laughs> next, next year after I graduate, I plan on going to Baker College for culinary, in, for culinary arts to become a professional pastry chef and to hopefully one day open a bakery. And there is our future and our future donuts. My goodness, what a wonderful thing. And we have more of our future to present to you and Randy Lindquist is going to introduce this program.
That was very dramatic music for my entrance. I'm not sure I needed that necessarily. Uh, we have a youth panel today. I'd like to invite the youth. They're going to speak to come on up and join me up here on stage or up front here, please. So these fine folks attended the Life Leadership Conference, which you saw in that video. And thanks to Mike Vogus for highlighting that conference with that awesome video like he always does with his great work. Mr. John Noling, of course, helped facilitate a lot of that. He's a champion for that, and he's a champion for these kids and others in the county. So we appreciate having the opportunity to talk to you today. I have a list of questions I'm going to ask and to get some responses from this group. The first one is, I want you to introduce yourself and tell us where, uh, what grade you're in and what school you're from, please, just down the road. Um, I'm Abigail Silvis. I go to Mona Shores, and I'm in 11th grade. I'm Emma Wahlberg. I go to Spring Lake, and I am a senior. I'm River Creed. I go to Orchard View, and I'm a junior. Hello, my name is Kylie Foster. I go to Muskegon High School, and I am a junior. Hello, I'm Aiden Roberson. I go to Reese Puffer High School, and I am a senior. Excellent. So our first question is about Life Leadership Conference. After experiencing the Life Leadership Conference, what do you consider to be your biggest takeaway? We'll just kind of bounce around and see what you have to say. What's your biggest takeaway from that conference? Um, I would say the connections I've made. Uh, I know a lot more um, students my age now from other schools, and I also know a lot more of you and a lot more other adults who are also there. And I've gotten to connect with them and they've led me to greater things. Um, I would have to say, um, speaking about my local Interact Club at Mona Shores, um, going to Life Leadership, I didn't really realize how um, big the community of Rotary and Interact was and realizing that there were kids like me who were passionate about making change in our communities. And so um, it began to have um, combined projects between high schools and communications and friendships that um, I think will last forever, so. Um, for me, I believe that uh, when the students talked about their experience at the youth exchange, that was really eye-opening for me because not only can we be leaders in our own communities, but even outside of the country, we can move farther and push boundaries. For me, I found it um, to be truly unique how every single leader that attended that conference was also somebody that was really easy to bond with. For me, it was learning different leadership styles that are effective. Speak up, sir. For me, it was learning <laughs> um, different leadership styles that are effective because I'm a very hands-off leader and want people to think, like do what they want to do and then I'm there to support them. but. I learned that that's okay to lead that way. So that was definitely my biggest takeaway. Excellent, thank you. So much has been said about a speaker that was at Life Leadership, Molly Kennedy, uh, by many of the conferees, including I think some of you. So what was it about her message that you think has relevance for Muskegon area students? Um, I believe that there are, like within Muskegon area, like a lot of people, especially within my community, they are facing like a lot of struggles and for them to be able to maybe change their perspective just a bit can make things think, like feel a bit like brighter, um, maybe open new doors to opportunity. Um, I believe that in such a difficult time coming out of the pandemic, such as like COVID, um, Molly Kennedy's message of perseverance and grit and being able to work through the hard times, it really stood out to me, especially since my school in particular was hit very, very hard by COVID. So hearing her talk about how she could persevere even through one of the worst moments of her life as her story went, um, that was really inspiring to me. Yeah, and a lot of what she talks about and like preaches to us is changing your perspective and changing your mindset. And it's like almost daily, I'm like, wait, you gotta do what Molly Kennedy said, so. It's like almost daily for me. Um, I definitely think that it was her pushing through, like her feeling hopeless and realizing that there is hope if she flips her 20 and changes her perspective. 
Um, her communication style is definitely unique. Um, her humor, I guess, um, really engages you and connects you. I know that um, I have spoken with a few Rotarians about um, bringing her to schools and, and spreading her message because her message is something that came across very strong to me um, because it connected to a lot of teenagers and mental health struggles today. And I think that having that um, communication and relationship with an adult that you can have um, t talks with and can understand what you're going through, I think is necessary. And her message was very strong and stuck with me every day, just like Emma said. Um, flip your Tony. So let's give perspective to flip your 20. So changing your pers perspective is what her message is. It's about a paradigm shift. And a paradigm equals 20 cents. So she says, flip your 20. That's why it's flip your 20. And we all carried around two dimes the entire yes. conference. Yes. <laughs> so for all the, in the audience, if you want to change your perspective, flip your 20, right? All right. <laughs> Uh, what would you tell someone who is considering attending the Life Leadership Conference in the future? So, for me, I was very on the fence about the Life Leadership Conference for the longest time because I was not officially a part of my school's branch of Rotary. And the only reason I went was because such an amazing man, uh, John Noling, reached out to me. He saw something in me that I couldn't see in myself. And going to that conference helped me realize it. It helped me realize the potential that I had not yet discovered. And to anyone who was on the fence about discovering or going to the Life Leadership Conference, it will help you better understand yourself and better understand how to be the leader that you want to be. Yes. Anybody else? Oh. <laughs> um, I would say um, I was also on the fence. Um, I was the only kid at Mona Shores to go. I didn't know anybody there. It was kind of something that I had to push myself to go, kind of, it's gonna be worth it. Mr. Noling said it's gonna be worth it. You gotta do it, you gotta do it. <laughs> so I went there and um, I think that immediately all of us, I think we can all agree we immediately had a connection. Um, all, it was just a big family and, and Anybody that went to Life Leadership Conference, they will tell you, they will describe it as family. Um, I think we all had this um, connection through wanting to help one another, wanting to change our communities, and that's what made us drive to have these relationships, is wanting that one strive to help, so. I had the privilege to go the year before, and that was on Zoom due to COVID. And um, so much stuff that happened on Zoom was boring and you don't <laughs> want to sit through it, but the fact that this conference on Zoom was so, just like, it came out and grabbed me. So then I was like, well, I obviously have to go again because it's in person and it was 10 times better. So going in, I, I knew it was going to be good and I went with a friend and I just think even the, after the second time I was changed for, for really good for really good reasons. I would say yes, go 100%. It was, <laughs> it was just amazing. Like the people that I met there, like e these people up here too, like I would have never met them otherwise. I'm so glad that I did. And I'm glad that I went also like Abby, I was the only one to go from my school. I didn't know anybody. It was very nerve wracking, but everyone there was so inviting that it just made you feel like you've already known them forever. Um, for me, I would definitely say go, 100%. Um, meeting new people and hearing about their experiences is just an amazing experience. Like, it's really nice. And um, not only do you grow as your rotary group, but you grow as a person as well because they understand the struggles that you have gone through and they open your eyes to the struggles that they have gone to that you didn't even think about. Um, and I think that that's really cool. Great, so one of you mentioned something about learning about Rotary. So, Rotary, so what did you learn about Rotary going through this Life Leadership Conference? Anything extra you might have learned? I learned about how international Rotary is and a lot about the Pol M Polio Now campaign. Um, 
and both of those were just great to know, have that in the back of my mind, and makes me want to push and go to Rotaract, to college, and maybe even Rotary when I'm out of college. Um, I think that I learned that um, it's a community. Um, when when uh, in Interact meetings, I never really met Rotarians. I'm, I had a few family members, maybe, and Mr. Noling, obviously, um, but I never really uh, seen it as much as I did at Life Leadership. Um, I learned up through uh, projects and um, things that they donate and um, organizations they help, and it was actually very inspiring <laughs> um, to see the numbers. Um, it's it's. It's one thing to see numbers, but it's a different thing to see actual change. And um, seeing that was truly incredible and life-changing. Uh, for me, I learned most of what Rotary was from that one experience at the Life Leadership Conference. Not being involved in it beforehand made going there, understanding what Rotary was, understanding its mission, its values, uh, made it, in my opinion, 10 times more, it had more weight to it because I used to be someone on the outside looking in and then I was in, I was in with Rotary and it felt like I was at home. Um, so for me, I believe that um, seeing the branches of Rotary and just how like they connect to things that uh, I didn't know that Rotary was behind. Um, just even just small things like the flags being out for Labor Day. Um, I helped with Mr. Noling to put those out and um, I see them all the time but I don't think, hmm, who put those there? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I, I like seeing the small things as well um, that I didn't see before. Yeah, I too learned just how much Rotary does. Like before I knew about like Day of Caring and Polio Now but that was about it. But like Rotary is so huge and impactful to so many people that like I never thought of before either. I think we have some future Rotarians up here. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to shift gears here and talk about Interact for just a few minutes. So for those of you that have an active Interact club, I think all of you do, I believe, uh, tell us your current role in the club, uh, plans you have for this year, and why the club's important to you and your school. Um, I am Mona Shore's Interact Club president. Um, <laughs> um, right now, um, it's kind of sort of an individual project for me, but um, trying to get that Molly Kennedy tour um, is something that I'm, I'm striving for. Uh, and um, introducing that uh, mental health aspect in, into Rotary is something that I, th I think is important. Um, and then also, uh, I wanted to work uh, uh, closely with um, animals. Uh, it's something that I'm passionate about and um, and polio now we've done in the past and it's been very successful um, and teaching about that, it, it, it has a place in everyone's heart and so um, reaching and uh, seeing that place in everyone um, is something that I've always thought was cool and I love to introduce that project every year. Um, oh. <laughs> um, I am the vice president of Muskegon High School's Rotary Interact. Um, right now, we're kind of a small group right now, but we are working on getting more and more people so that we can have a very large group of hardworking people. Um, <laughs> but um, right now, we are working towards a workshop um, alongside the diatribe. Um, we felt that that was fit for our community. Um, just working on poetry, working on art, and knowing that there's different outlets for mental health. Just like there's different things for you to do and not just like what's expected of you. Um, and I feel like that that's pretty nice. Okay, so I am president <coughs> over at Spring Lake, our Interact Club. Um, like Abby said, we're trying to get Molly Kennedy to our school. And on top of that, um, our big football rivalry is Fruitport. And so every year we do Battle of the Bayou, which I, before joining Interact, had no idea it's actually a fundraiser for Helen DeVos Children's Hospital. So that's really in the 
front of our minds right now, getting ready for that. And it's a huge event. Um, yeah, and then we have so many service projects throughout the year and people just meet and it's a little community inside of a community. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just a member, but an active member. <laughs> I, our biggest goal, we've adopted families for Christmas in the past, but our biggest goal this year is try to adopt three or four families at Christmas, just to spread what we would normally do for one family. All right, um, so uh, with Interact, we had a couple tough years with COVID and schools and et cetera. So what did your club and your school learn through that COVID experience and how can that help you grow and uh, kind of lead differently in the future? Um, for my Interact group, uh, we weren't necessarily around during COVID. We actually, um, after COVID, there was a bit of time where there was no Interact within um, Muskegon. And so building and working from the ground up has been um, definitely a challenging experience, but it has been very fruitful. Um, we have been like, we've really been working so hard and we've grown as individuals and just as a group. So uh, during COVID and shortly afterwards, our schools interact sadly um, was not around uh, COVID hit our school pretty hard. And the year after COVID, when we all came back to school, sadly, our our school's Rotary Club had a had somebody pass away, so we could not uh, perform as a club. But this year, um, coming out of COVID, we're, we're more resilient than ever. And we found that our club is younger now because we have so many more freshmen. And that's such a good thing. We have so many more people coming in and wanting to do good things with Rotary? Um, I would say resilience. Um, community is something that I would always use to describe Rotary. Um, but when in our Interact Clubs, um, we all went through a, a hard year, um, that sort of feeling like we were by ourselves when we were um, in our little COVID groups <laughs> in our houses. Um, but I, th I think that when we got back together again, there was this se sense of togetherness that we all went through something together. And I think that making that communication s so much more easier was that we all had something in common, which was that we all went through the, uh, such a struggle together being by ourselves for so long. And so um, I think that made us stronger as a group. Um, I think there's a drive to do more. Um, we all missed out on like a year and a half of being active, being a part of something. So that drive to go volunteer, to be with people is significantly increased and we can see that through a lot of things. I think that in the end, it really helped our club grow a lot because people went from the mentality of like, I have to go to school and then I got shut down. And now people are like, I get to go to school and they wanna be involved. So we've had a lot of new people come join our club. All right, so now it's time to put all of them in the audience on the spot, even out in virtual land. So we wanna know how can our Muskegon Rotary Club members better support the needs of youth in our county? Any thoughts around that? I think um, when giving help to certain interact groups, it can sometimes be quite general. Um, rather than being specific to the group, to the community. Like I know with um, my high school, um, there's not just mental health struggles, which there are, and it's very evident, but um, there's also just like, not, I don't know how to put it into words, but um, just every day, constantly struggling and battling um, different things that are coming at them in their lives. And so finding something that specifically fits for them would be great. Um, I guess, um, uh, I, I, I will say communication a million times, um, but communicating, uh, project ideas, ways that you think that you can um, be helpful to the club, ways that you think that you can um, you can be more involved with um, Interact and Rotary itself, ways that we can 
um, make it sort of a combined thing. Um, and so I think that that's a, a main thing is trying to um, have communications with uh, uh, youth and um, have adults that we can look up to in Rotary. All right, I'm gonna ask one bonus question before we go to the audience for questions and put you back on the spot from them. That bonus question is about Mr. Noling. So we all know <laughs> that Mr. Noling is a champion for youth and youth leadership in the county. We all know that here, he's involved in pretty much everything youth related. So I wanna know from you, because he drives a lot of work in the Interact Clubs and keeps on you about things, what's, uh, what's one thing you'd say about Mr. Noling and his support of you and your club? Mr. Nolling has been so great um, at supporting our club specifically. We started from the ground up, like I was saying before, and Mr. Nolling has been there like every step of the way, um, letting us know when um, we can get our pop cans and um, start getting funding for our club. Has been just such a great help, and I really appreciate him. We met my principal a couple weeks ago at a Spring Lake Rotary event, and was direct and was like, hey, we want to help get Molly Kennedy at your school. And I really appreciate that because there's only so much I can do and so much Mr. Nolan can do. So between the both of us, I think we're going we're gonna to get it done. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Noling has been, in my opinion, the main push for trying to get Molly Kennedy to our school at Reese Puffer. Um, he's been uh, definitely persistent in the emails. <laughs> but I, I really appreciate that he is so, so forward, so persistent, and so willing to help us drive where we need to go in order to reach our goals. And I know that he will do that for our club, and there's nothing that we could ever ask for, nothing more. Oh, boy, Mr. Noling. Um <laughs> So Mr. Noling and my mom worked together at Orchard View Adult Education, which was kind of my, my push to um, Rotary. So him and my mom have had conversations before, um, talking about me and um, things that I can do within my school. And um, he actually introduced me and pushed me into these leadership positions, which I have never been more grateful for. Um, he, he said, well, you need more, you need more youth in your club. There's, it's senior heavy. And I was like, I don't know, Mr. Nolan. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that. And he was like, well, why don't you run? And I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> don't know about that. Uh, and here I am now. So thank you so much, Mr. Nolan. I would, I would say communication. Like, he is so good at communicating. He wants to make sure that we do not miss a single thing that's going on. <laughs> like, if it's happening, he wants us to be there. And like that, I appreciate that a lot because sometimes communication is a struggle. And then you hear about something that happened and wish that you could have been there, wish that you could have helped, but like he makes sure that we'll be there. So thank you. And don't worry, Mr. Nolan keeps me on my toes as well. So <laughs> we're in the same boat. Uh, I think our future's in good hands with these youth leaders. What do you think? Thank you for being here and thank you for speaking to our group. Let's look for some questions from the audience for you before we go. Not so much a question, but a comment. I mean, the five of you are just so impressive. Uh, thank you for confirming my decision to go into construction. <laughs> <laughs> but two, two things just real quick. You know, I mean, you, the five of you are leaders and leaders have the benefit of influence. And so I encourage you to use your influence, uh, similar to what Aiden said, to really connect with freshmen in your high schools and get them engaged early on. Anybody else out there have a question for our fine panel here? I don't really have a question, but I wanted to comment also about John Noling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have the Heritage Memorial Garden downtown and John is always willing to help. We meet on Thursdays from 8 to 10 in the morning, and he'll be there at 7 o'clock just so he can help us out. You're right. He's a great, great person. All right, let's get some questions now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right 
Hi, and thank you for your leadership at a young age and looking forward to um, you becoming Rotarians as you age. <clears throat> My question is, and, and that's sort of to put our club on the spot, would it be helpful if a member of our Rotary Club would attend your interact meetings occasionally uh, to provide communication and support, not to run the meeting, but just to be there and support. Uh, and I would, I'm curious about what you think about that. Yeah, I feel like that'd be really great, especially for like um, my group specifically, um, we would really appreciate that. Knowing somebody who has that experience would really um, help us move forward um, instead of falling into the same loops. Yes, um, please. Um, uh, having, what, having an advisor is one thing, somebody who can help guide you along, but ha having somebody who's actually involved within Rotary is so helpful. Um, I can take 100 questions a minute about projects that I'm doing in the future w or whatever questions that people might have or why they want to get involved in Rotary, but um, I think that asking somebody who's an adult um, is something that having a communication with an uh, adult who's older and who is a Rotarian is something that will be so useful and so helpful. All right, let's give it up for the youth oh, again. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, well. We want to thank you for coming to uh, show us a little bit about our future. And when I listen to a panel like that, I go home just a little bit more relaxed to know that there are people coming up behind me who are really going to take over this, this world and can make it a better place. In your honor, we will be uh, contributing to the Malala Fund, uh, a literacy fund that's international and focuses on uh, girls who normally would not be have access to education and so we will be making a contribution to that fund in your honor as a thank you for speaking to us today I don't know I just feel like applauding again <laughs> and Today we have a bunch of birthdays. Now you said you wanted Rotarians that are kind of old. So now we have a list here <laughs> of people who are getting there. Jeff Lewis has a birthday on September 17th, as well as Tim Sustrick. And Justin Kitschka is, has a birthday on the 18th, Todd Rexford on the 19th, and Nicholas Murano on the 20th. So I know some of you are here willing to give us your birthday gift of $10. Uh, so let's sing them up to the front. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And now we have our member spotlight. In Rotary, we strive to make our membership as rich and diverse as we can. And part of that is what our Rotarians do when they're not at a Rotary Club. And so today we're going to have a focus on one of our members, John Gale. But not quite yet. So I have to stand up here and vamp a little bit about how great our diversity in Rotary is. And I can sneak in a little announcement, and that is that we are working very hard with the Membership Council to solidify and enrich our committee work. And so in the next week, in the next couple of days, chairmen will be receiving another request for a survey that asks not only about what your membership is, but what your goals are what resources you are using right now, and more importantly, what resources you may need to fulfill your elevated goals. So if you see that uh, email from either Marianne Gorman or myself, please respond. And if you have a chance next week after the meeting, I would like the chairmen uh, of the committees to just hang around for about 10 minutes to discuss 
uh, future uh, uh, planning to enrich our committee life. And now, John Gale. This mic is reminding us of the old days when we never could get a uh, PowerPoint to work. Hi, my name is John Gale. I'm the Chief of Police of the City of Northern Shores. I joined Rotary about nine years ago. My mentor was Gary Nealon and Mark Myers, and uh, just watching the amount of service that they had to the community and in all the uh, different functions that they were involved with was something I knew I had to be involved with. So I've been married uh, for 28 years uh, to my wife, Kristen. She works for the Intermediate School District. Um, I have two children. Uh, my eldest is Lauren. She is 22 years old. She's a student, a senior at uh, Calvin University. She's going into nursing and hopes to get into pediatrics and uh, very excited about her career, upcoming career. I also have a second daughter that's, her name is Emily, and she's a student at Fair State University as a sophomore this fall, and she's studying architecture. My day-to-day -day task as the chief of police is to obviously uh, manage uh, 38 police officers. We have three divisions. Myself is the administrator and we have uh, road patrol and special services. Um, I really enjoy mentoring kids at the CIT or, or CTC and also at the college level and helping them with their career potentially in criminal justice in the future and pointing them in the right direction and giving them the uh, tools they need to get to where they want to be. Also, I like working with uh, the Ride with Pride program and Sportsman for Youth. I'm currently the president of Sportsman for Youth. And all these different programs are really to help kids make the right decisions early in life and so they're successful later on. And, and obviously that helps us here in law enforcement to uh, you know, keep people uh, to be good citizens someday and not go the wrong direction. And to further enrich our membership, we have two inductions today. So if Gary Nealon and Pam Babbitt would come up with your, um, our new inductees. <laughs> Over here, Gary. In front of that, there you go. Yeah. Yep, it's good. That's good. I am Pam Babbitt, and I am happy to introduce to all of you Stephen Lewis Tomzak. Well, I just put that on top. You didn't have to read that. <laughs> <laughs> That's too proper. Steve was born in Grand Rapids. As an infant, his father, David, a podiatrist, purchased a podiatry practice in Muskegon in the early 60s and moved he and his mother, Jane, to Muskegon. Soon after, the Tomzaks added four more children. Steve attended parochial schools and graduated from Muskegon Catholic Central. Steve has always been a responsible facilitator at age 13, he created a lawn and snow service business. At 16, he became an ambulance driver and funeral assistant at Balburnie Apostle Funeral Home, where he also played the piano for funerals. He also worked at Vets Menswear. After graduating from high school, Steve then attended Muskegon Community College and then Baker College where he earned his associate's degree in accounting, then to Aquinas, where he earned both a Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration and a Master's in Management. Steve was an active member in the Grand Rapids JCs as he continued to build upon the characteristics of service above self and community service. 
Steve has been in the facilitating, facilitating business all his life. In 2002, Steve moved to Tampa, Florida, where he continued his God-given gift as a sales engineer for an industrial pump company. He served the community through his church as the director of Servants of Christ, feeding and helping the homeless for 13 years in Yabor City, a e suburb e of Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> I need to let him read this, right? <laughs> Steve also is an active member of the Knights of Columbus. In 2015, Steve was asked by his mother to return to Muskegon to assist her in caregiving his father which Steve did until his father's death in November of 2019. Steve is still here living and helping his mother. Of course, otherwise he'd be back in Tampa. Steve is an usher at St. Mary's Church and on the Muskegon Polish Festival Committee. Steve is currently a mortgage loan officer and facilitator of multiple other business here in Western Michigan. Steve is, an, is a tennis player and plays the piano. And one more thing. Please welcome Steve. <laughs> I think she usually says that. No? I get it. All right, now we'll move you guys out and we'll right. sit you right in front. I think this is what the Oscars must be like. Get them off, get us on. So um, I have a great pleasure of introducing Stephanie Tushak to the club. I have one favorite sister, actually one, only one sister. And she has one daughter, probably her favorite daughter, which is Stephanie, my niece. And I'm so proud that she's joining the Rotary Club today. She's currently an account executive with Lamar Advertising, the billboard company, right? Do you climb up on those? I don't. Okay. In her role, she works with local companies and individuals along the lakeshore to grow their business via billboard advertising. Previously, Stephanie served as general manager for Cano Place. Prior to that, she was the outreach manager for Agewell Services of West Michigan. She served as co-president of the Rotaract Club of Baker College. Did a great job with that. And, uh, you know, everybody likes John Noling. Do you like John Noling? I love John Noling. He's all right, guy. all right. I'm still on the fence, but we'll get back to that. So, <laughs> so this is where her love for Rotary and service really started. Her love for service grew as she volunteered locally and was only elevated once she traveled to Honduras with local Rotary clubs. She's been on staff for the Rotary Life Leadership Conference for seven years, so it was perfect to induct her today. She was born and raised in Muskegon, graduated from Mona Shores High School, and later attended Baker College of Muskegon, where she received her bachelor's degree in business. Stephanie's husband, Nick, is executive chef at the Hearthstone in Muskegon. We have great family dinners. Uh, and they currently live in North Muskegon with their two dogs, Rosie and Lily. Why Rosie? I know, that's your middle name. So. In her free time, she loves spending time with friends and family, traveling, shopping, listening to true crime podcasts, wow. and learning about food. So Stephanie Tushak, my niece. I just have one um, minor complaint to give to the membership that when it was mentioned that Steve was a graduate of Aquinas College, no one went, hoo hoo, go Saints! Yay! Uh, <laughs> so glad to have a fellow alumni in our club. Fellow Rotarians and honored guest, the Rotary Club of Muskegon is privileged to induct a new member. We are beginning, uh, you are beginning a great adventure in leadership, friendship, and service to the community and humanity. The Rotary Club of Muskegon has accepted you as a person of good character and high ethical standards with a heart for service. Your sponsor has invited you to be part of a worldwide organization dedicated to fostering service above self. It is through your own actions that you become a Rotarian. We encourage you to learn about Rotary by actively participating in the club, including attending meetings, social events, and service projects. And it is my pleasure, it is my pleasure,
It is my pleasure to give you the pin by which your fellow Rotarians and community will recognize you as a member. We ask that you wear it proudly. I would also like to challenge you to share the gift that has been given to you to be a representative of Rotary in the wider community by sharing the spirit of the four-way test in your work, service, and play, and inviting those you meet along the way to join in this mission. Do you accept this challenge? Yes. Thank you. Together as Rotarians, we work to enrich youth, ensure health, develop communities, and promote peace. Please rise and welcome our newest Rotarian members. We have a number of announcements. Um, and it looks like just about all of them are requests for, uh, for Rotarians. First of all, and I'll say it once, maybe twice, next week on the 22nd, we are going to be meeting at the Delta down the street. Um, not here, but the Delta. Secondly, um, we have a couple of requests from our uh, committee members. One is the reflection. Alan, is that distributed yet, or you're still holding on to it? Alan Albert has the sign-up sheet for reflection, uh, the people who want to offer reflections. And uh, the last two, three weeks, man, we've had some beautiful reflections. And so I would encourage anybody to join that group and share your wisdom and your thoughts with us as we begin the meeting. Um, second of equal importance is we still need more cookies for next week's uh, Peace Builders e event. Um, and I was told by Annette Jack, who was organizing this, that we probably have enough coconut macaroons. <laughs> so to avoid that, but we would, uh, oatmeal, uh, butterscotch, chocolate chip, all welcome. Please uh, make yourself known to Annette if you can bring a dozen cookies to that event. And the last one is a bit of a scolding. We had 13 people come today who had not signed up using the Sign Up Genius. And that is important to us because we do not want to run out of food. So uh, uh, you know who you are. Please pay attention to the Sign Up Genius um, so that we have enough cookies for everybody. Next week's, pro uh, uh, next week's program is the Peace Builders Scholars. That is going to begin actually with our event at 4 o'clock the day before on Wednesday at the Rotary Park where we will meet our speaker and we will be able to see the beautiful peace poles that are being created right now by our Poppin scholars. Uh, thank you, Claire, for leading that event. I'm looking forward to that immensely. I want to thank our guest for being with us, Mary McDonald. Oh boy, the guests for the kids, so many, uh, but Phyllis in uh, Wahlberg is the guest, and I'm not going to introduce her husband as a guest because he's one of our members, but it's good to see you, John. Dr. Paselli, Dr. Lambert, Jeff Coyle, Je Ray Raina Mathis, thank you for coming. Um, anyone else that I missed, I thank you for coming. And now uh, we will end the meeting with the raffle. <laughs> Boy, that could get me into a lot of trouble.
There we go, right over here. Yay! Yeah, it is. We always try to get somebody outside to win. That increases our luck. Thank you, everyone, for, for losing your money. All of that money that was lost is going to the Polio Plus uh, campaign. We do have a Rewind meeting tonight at 5.30, is that correct, Bill? 5.15 at Bill Loxterman's house. Uh, it's in the, uh, the rim, the address, or just uh, check with Bill before you leave. And now we will rise and say our four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it better for all concerned? 